Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today is the day where I get to pick my favorite bourbon of the year. Now, I did something different this year than I typically do. Usually I just kind of do my favorite whiskey of the year. Or actually, I've, I've called it top whiskey in the past. I, I kind of dislike that term. I'm gonna get on my soapbox here for a sec. I kind of dislike the term top whiskey of the year unless I'm like a whiskey spirits competition because not only am I not necessarily reviewing whiskeys that came out this year, but I have not tried every whiskey that came out this year either. So these are my favorite bourbons specifically that I reviewed this year. And I'm gonna start at the bottom of my list. I have, I think 16 to go through. So I'm gonna kind of rattle them off fairly quickly with a little bit of an explanation as to why it's where it is. But let's start with my least favorite. So this is the Old Forester 100. This one was to me a disappointment. At 100 proof, I was expecting it to be a little bit more substantial and something that I would personally enjoy. I mean, I'm just gonna put this out here because you're gonna notice the trend. I love high proof, you know? It's usually a good factor for me liking it just by default. If I'm looking for something random that I've never heard of, I'm usually gonna opt for something higher proof. Like 43% is fine. I'm talking like over 60. So anyway, with Old Forester at 50%, I, I felt like it was an okay for cocktail, but not very enjoyable to sip, and that's usually my qualifier. So, least favorite. I'm gonna attempt to keep these all on screen, but I might run out of space, so we'll, we'll do what we can. All right, next was the 1792 Bottled in Bond. Now, those of you that saw the live stream or, or video review, I think it was a review, that I did on all three of these, uh, the, the Bottled in Bond, the Small Batch, and the Full Proof, will remember that this was my least favorite. I felt like it didn't do much for the brand. I think that they thought to themselves, hey, we make a bourbon, we should make a, a you know bottled and bond version, put it at 100 proof and call it a day because people will just buy it. This one is worth skipping to me. The full proof is great, the small batch is great, this one's lackluster and not worth your money. So, all right, next is a surprise to me. Wild Turkey Rare Breed. I, you know, like I said, or actually, I don't think I said this, none of these whiskeys that I have on this list this year were bad, and that's unusual. Usually there's something that I'm just like, this is atrocious. None of them were bad this year, so it was kind of a good year for me. But let's go back to the wild turkey. I know that a lot of you guys disagreed with my assessment on my review, and that's why this is my list. But to me, there were a couple of reasons I put this one so low. It tastes fine. It's got the wild turkey profile but at the additional price point over the 101, and even the Long Branch, really, um, it just didn't do anything different or, or interesting to me. It, that's kind of it. It just feels like it was put there at you know whatever price point, I forget, I'll put it up here or whatever. Um, and it, it just didn't do anything worth the money. So that was it for me. I, I kind of was not a huge fan. All right, next. We're kind of getting a little bit more middle of the road here. Like these three, I wouldn't suggest going out and buying. Um, this one is totally a buy, just, you know, nothing to be overly excited about. This is the Old Forester 86, and it's great for mixing. It's great for sipping. It's it's totally fine. You're going to drink this and be like, well, oh, yeah, that's a bourbon. <laughs> All right. So moving along. Next, we've got the... George Remus. This is the regular George Remus, and... It's totally fine. Um, again, just middle of the road. You taste this, you think, okay, that's a bourbon. Maybe I'll stock this as just something to mix with or sip on, whatever. This is the kind of bourbon that I would probably put rocks in just because it would make it at all interesting. <laughs> so that that's really it. Um, not bad, just middle of the road. All right, next is the regular Rossville Union. Now, Rossville Union, as you can see, there isn't a ton missing out of here, and there's a good reason for that. I, I reviewed this on a live stream with uh, Dave from, from MGP, and it was fine. I quickly moved on from this one to the, the barrel-proof version, because when I tasted this, I just got excited for the barrel-proof version, and I thought to myself, well, this is fine, but I bet the barrel-proof is a lot better. So, again, middle of the road. Buy it or don't buy it. It's completely up to you. All right. So, um, one, two more on this side. So we've got the Larceny Barrel Proof. Now this was the A120. Now here's where I'm a little disappointed. I almost put this actually way lower on the list, but then I, I kind of retested it or tasted it, same thing in my profession, and it, it tastes fine, but it was a disappointment. I love Larceny, like regular Larceny, I think is a great 
whiskey. This one was a disappointment because they're attempting to be Elijah Craig barrel proof or, you know, do the same thing, put on multiple batches a year and just kind of have that differing flavor profile. This was the one that they put right out the gate. And boy, was I disappointed. I was so excited for the idea of, I actually used, so like my local uh, liquor store, if you buy a certain amount of whiskeys, you get these things called hold cards. I'm sure you're familiar with the concept. You can kind of put it into a, a drawing and you get the ability to purchase a whiskey, right? So when this one came out, I thought it was gonna be more rare than it is. So I used my very first hold card ever on this whiskey. I was the only person to put it in. <laughs> so I lost my hold card, but I also you know, got the whiskey and I, I bought it, it was like 55 bucks. And I was just so disappointed. I don't think it has anything to do with the hold card being gone, but I, I do think it has to do with the disappointment over something new and just not being impressed by it. All right, next. The regular Elijah Craig small batch. Great whiskey. Um, as you can tell, I enjoy this whiskey frequently. It's almost gone. I really need to just look to finish this off because I like to keep a bottle of this on hand for any sort of review purposes. But at this point, I mean, so much is gone, it's it's gonna start kind of changing a little bit. So, uh, regular Elijah Craig barrel proof will, I mean, sorry, regular Elijah Craig will always be one that I suggest people buy, uh, especially if they're getting into bourbons. All right, moving along. So we're halfway through the list. That was the bottom half of the list. As you can see, really no terrible choices here, um, but let's move on to the better stuff. All right, <sighs> this is one that might, might annoy some of you, might make some of you happy. Um, this is just above the middle of the list. The Blanton's Gold Edition. Now, here's the problem with this one to me. Blanton's gold, or Blanton's in general, is super hard to find. That's fine. I don't have to rehash the point that most of us think that Blanton's is kind of an overhyped thing. And it is. But what could be more overhyped than regular Blanton's than just the kind of better version of regular Blanton's, right? So this one is super hard to find, if you can at all, in the U.S. Although I think that they might have just started selling it. Um, either way, the gold edition was sent to me by, by a, a fan, and that was super nice, thank you, but I'm just underwhelmed by it. And knowing how much it costs, I think it's like a hundred bucks if you can even get your hands on it, it was good enough to make the top half of the list, but the bottom half of that list. So, let's move on. Rossville Union Barrel Proof. This was one that I was surprised at how much I liked. Now again, higher proof, so I'm bound to like it. But more importantly, it, it's just good. I mean, this is a, a very good whiskey. It is reminiscent to me of some of the kind of like Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, right, where it's it's a unique flavor that you're only really gonna get um, with some, well, no, that's, that's not entirely true. It is a unique flavor, but it, it has that sweetness going on and the high proof that makes it super drinkable, but gonna get you in trouble. Um, so it is 56.3%, so a little bit on the lower side of barrel proof, but still very, very good. All right, moving along, we've got the 1792 small batch. What? He's putting this above Blanton's and, and other stuff? So why? The price. The price makes this one shoot up higher on my list as far as I'm concerned. I love the taste of this. I think it's great. I recommended a bunch of people buy this for this year for Christmas presents. I bought this a couple times this year for Christmas presents. And it's, it's a great whiskey. It really is. I mean, there's no more to say about it. If you haven't tried this, do yourself a favor. It's like 26 bucks. Um, and I, if you don't like it, send me the rest of the bottle. <laughs> so, all right. Next is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Now, here's the problem. This is the B519, which was from last year. I reviewed this super early this year. Um, I, I know the picture of it had snow in the, in the, in the picture. So, I don't remember exactly when, but the, the barrel proof itself is just great all around. Um, there's a couple of misses, but for the most part, Elijah Craig barrel proof is gonna do really well. This one is really tasty. Um, again, trying not to finish the bottle just because I don't like, I don't like finishing things that I love because <laughs> then I can't have them anymore. All right, moving along to the 1792 full, full proof. Yeah, full proof, I almost said full batch which doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but then again, full proof is what? Just say barrel proof. Anyway, full proof, 1792. I believe this got full, um, like a whiskey of the year in a previous year, but more importantly, it's delicious. And it is such a great step up 
from the regular small batch. It's kind of like they took that, did everything again that was right, and then just made it higher ABV. This is 62.5%, so it's gonna kind of be a bit of a hit in the mouth, but it's gonna be tasty too. All right, we are in the top three here. So all three of these I think are going to be a surprise. Um, number three, is the Rossville Repeal Reserve. Sorry, that's a bit of a tongue twister, I had to look at it. Specifically version number four, series number four. Now, here's the thing. I haven't drank a ton of this, but what I did do is while I was on a stream with the guy responsible for making it, I kind of just kept drinking this while he was talking, and I felt myself starting to make a mistake doing that being in a public forum. And uh, so I had to switch it back over to the regular Rossville. Um, Here's the thing, this is a really, really good whiskey. And the, the Series 4 is, it's one that you wouldn't probably pick up if you just saw it. And the reason for that, at least to me, is the, the bottle looks kind of special, but honestly, it's it's not anything that stands out a lot, but it's also expensive. Um, I'll put the price up here because I don't remember exactly what it is, but I remember being surprised at how much it, it cost. And it was very, very good. I mean, honestly, it's worth the money. So. Anyway, that's number three. Number two, again, going back to the proof thing. Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. This is fantastic. I had been being told for, I don't know how many years at this point, I don't even know how many years this has been being made, but for a while, let's just say for a while, I've been being told to buy this one and review it. And I finally did on a live stream that I did where I, I told other people to buy it along with me and drink on the stream with me. And a lot of people actually did. I was surprised at how many people bought it. Like we're talking eight, nine people. And I mean, that might not sound like a huge amount, but just knowing that that many people went out and bought a bottle because they wanted to drink along with me, that is what's solidifying this one, other than the proof and how good it tastes. Don't get me wrong, this is a delicious whiskey, but this is kind of my favorite bourbons of the year. And that experience to go along with this was something that put this one over the top. Because what is whiskey drinking without the experiences that often come along with it? You know, some of us might have a, a vision of ourselves sitting in a lazy boy watching TV and drinking whiskey and thinking, oh yeah, you know, that was a really good sit. You know, but most of us are gonna be like, oh man, I remember sharing that whiskey with this person and it was a really good conversation. We were playing darts or like whatever. It's about the experiences, right? And for me, this was the experience. So. Also just really fantastic whiskey and fun to watch Jack Daniels do what they do and actually do it in a way that's not just old number seven. All right, my top whiskey of the year might be a bit of a surprise to some of you, but I'm pretty confident in it. This is the Joseph Magnus. Um, this whiskey is beautiful. I love every sip of this whiskey. And again, we're gonna talk a little bit about experience here. So this, this first off, this is a, a bourbon that's finished in sherry and cognac casks. So it's a unique flavor to me. It's nothing I've ever tasted before. It's rich, it's higher, I, I don't know what the ABV on this is, 100 proof. Okay, so it's, it's a little higher, but it's, I knew it was like enough to not be a 43%. Um, so it just tastes really good. But my experience with this one, when I did the, the bourbon maple syrup, which if you're curious at all, check the description down there, use the coupon code whiskey and you'll get a discount. Um, I did a, a bourbon barrel aged maple syrup that was really, really good. And I took this bottle with me up to the sugar house, which is what a maple syrup place is called, I've learned. Um, so as I was hanging out with Mario, who was the guy that, that helped make this, he and I shared some of this. And it was Corona, so like we kind of were being super like poor, far away and then like back away, take our masks down, take a sip. Like the whole thing was an experience that I'll remember, but this whiskey in general is just so good tasting um, that it's like, I'm smiling just thinking about it. I'm probably gonna have some of this later today now that I'm thinking about it. So the Joseph Magnus gets my bourbon of, my, my favorite bourbon of the year. Um, yeah, so that's my list today. Uh, there's 16 bottles here of bourbon. Tomorrow I'm gonna do Irish whiskeys because I'd like to do scotch kind of the next day. I wanna put Irish right in the middle. So tomorrow I'm gonna do Irish whiskeys and we'll do kind of the same type of video. So I hope that you tune in. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe. If you'd like to, go join the Patreon. There's lots of good stuff there. At least go check out the link. Um, especially if you've never joined a Patreon before, it's, it's really, really easy and it helps out a lot. So YouTube takes a lot of our money. So <laughs> anyway. Thank you very much for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Cheers.